Today we're going to be talking about varicose veins. We only get 10 minutes, it's a pretty large topic, but it's really here just to enlighten you a little and show you that there's other ways to help with varicose veins besides stripping of the vein, collapsing the vein, and things like that. You know, instead of surgery in a sense. We're always looking for alternative ways. The reason I got this is I was watching the show The Doctors last week, and it is a pretty interesting show. They do have some interesting ideas a lot of the time, but this one doctor said that veins don't do anything. It's okay to trip the vein, it's okay to collapse the vein, because they don't do anything. Well, you really got to understand that veins do a ton for the body. They provide nourishment for the nail beds, nourishment for your skin, your muscles, your organs, right? Um, your entire body, at the same time, veins actually bring deoxygenated blood, right, back to the heart in order to provide you, as it works through the heart, with life and energy and oxygen. So how could you say veins don't do anything? It's okay to take them out. The most common things we see nowadays with varicose veins is the typically bulging in the legs, the lower extremities. The most common is typically like on the side of the calves or behind the calves. Um, typically where their flexion folds are. Flexion folds being like that's a flexion fold, that's a flexion fold, things like that. So if you look at why people get varicose veins, well some of the most common are, we're not going to go into why, but some of the most common are not moving enough. Right, sitting too much, not exercising enough. That doesn't pump enough blood through the body. It actually pulls in the lower extremity because one of the ways you get blood from the lower extremities to the heart is through musculoskeletal pumping. That's why Marines wiggle their toes in their boots, their toes in their boots when they have to stand in attention for a long period of time so the blood doesn't pull so they don't pass out so they can actually get some pumping back up to the heart. Some other reasons are obesity. Obesity is a huge one. It can cause excess weight, kink the veins, and cause excess pooling. We can talk about hormone imbalances can easily cause thickening of, the thickening of the blood. Cigarette smoke and tobacco can easily cause thickening of the blood and affect the valves and the arterial walls. A lot of the foods people are eating, the crap foods, homogenized and pasteurized milk, watch any of our YouTube clips, go to our website, read any of our posts, and you'll see what we're talking about when we talk about foods. Now, foods can easily affect the veins, the arteries, the blood, uh, and the body as an entire system. Um, medications as a whole can easily affect the blood, the valves, and the arterial walls. So there's a lot of things that are affecting our body. Some say some of it's genetic, of course, but it started somewhere. You know, a lot of research says it's 40%, some say it's 80%. And some people say that varicose veins are actually a genetic condition, or actually a metabolic condition, that you're somewhat predisposed to, and you can actually do lab tests for it to see if you actually have some of the biomarkers for getting varicose veins. But there's always an answer, there's always a way out. So if you think about it, you know, one of the most interesting things, why I think more people are getting it nowadays is because they're sitting more and not moving enough, right? And you have a lot of veins in your lower extremities, like you have calcaneal veins, gastrocnemius veins, popliteal veins, a greater and lesser saphenous vein. They all essentially are fed by or feed into the femoral vein. Well, the femoral vein crosses the inguinal, con inguinal canal hill here, sorry. So if you look at it, I'll show you a little picture from my um, anatomy book. Let's see if I can get this in frame. I'm having trouble here. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. So you can see down here. I'm, I can't point because the whole camera thing is getting me off whack here. But you can see down in um, the corner there, you can kind of see the little circle. Well, that's your femoral um, vein kind of near um, that finger down there, right? Well, that hole is a little ligament in a canal. It can get impinged in that area as well as get impinged under the um, inguinal ligament. As well, if you look at the top of the page of this little circle in your diaphragm there, the inferior um, vena cava actually goes through that. So if you're sitting and you have respiratory problems, you're breathing with your chest. So let's say you're sitting. So that picture was right here in the groin and on the other side. Let's say you're sitting, you actually kink the femoral vein right there, and then the inferior vena cava goes right through the diaphragm. So if you're sitting like this all day and typing, and you're chest breathing, you're not pumping, so respiration can actually affect the way the veins and the arteries work in the body, and you're sitting like this, you actually clamp down on the inferior vena cava here, you clamp down the femoral vein here, so now you create so much pulling in the lower extremity. 
So there's a lot of people who say that that is the number one reason why you get varicose veins. It's because of sitting, not moving a lot, not getting a lot of um, um, blood flow back up to the heart, but getting a lot of pooling in the lower extremities due to sitting and not moving and exercising. Of course, I feel it's the medications as well, the food, uh, obesity is a huge one, and hormone problems. But if you look at all those, the key is to figure out why you have varicose veins. Well, I'm just going to show you a simple technique, and it's really to work on the more um, distal part of what's called the greater saphenous vein, which starts in the medial aspect of your foot here, goes all the way up the inside of your leg. It's a huge vein. It's one of the most typical ones where people have problems. You can actually use certain techniques to work any vein in the body. Um, we're just going to show you one basic technique. We use hands-on techniques at our clinic to actually help people with this that have edema or have varicose veins, but... We're just going to show you one technique because, of course, I can't show you them all. And a lot of this work is based off of the work of Guy Voyer at Sutherland Academy. So I don't think he'd be too happy if I show you everything I learned in course that I pay money for. So I just want to show you one technique. Flip my table around. This is to work a muscle. Now, all the veins pretty much course through specific parts of a muscle. Now, if we pump the muscle and do contractions, 10 to 20 contractions, and then we basically hold the contraction isometrically we create pooling in a, like a, a almost like basically a pumping mechanism like the veins. You do three sets of that and then you actually do what's called an osteoarticular drainage above the heart. Sounds technical but I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to do the actual, the, we're going to do the lateral gastrocnemius. You can isolate any muscle. So foot is externally rotated like this. You need resistance. The resistance is my body weight. Basically do 15 10 to 20 contractions like this, then hold it isometrically, right? You can see I'm holding it on this right leg. Then I do 15, 20 contractions or 10 to 20 contractions. Let's say I did that, then I hold it, right? I'm creating a pumping. And then I do it for a third set. Let's pretend I did three sets. And then I basically lay in my back. I want to get my extremity above my heart, get it above my heart and shake it, wiggle it to create a drainage. So what we did was we created a pumping mechanism with the 10 to 20 contractions. We created a pooling with isometric contraction. And then we did that whole sequence again. So it's created like a pumping. And then we do the drainage and it flushes all that excess pooling down towards the heart. Now, that's one out of many, right? And there's many other techniques you can do. But the goal with this clip is to teach you that there's so many other ways to help with varicose veins um, than just stripping the vein out of your leg because that's going to lead to more complications in the future, such as more pooling and edema in the lower extremities, other um, respiratory and other cardiac problems. They just don't tell you about it because, you know, they're relieving the symptom, they're relieving the varicose veins in your leg, but down the line you're going to have more problems. There's so many other techniques that you can use with varicose veins. A lot of Chinese medicine practitioners use cupping and bleeding to help with varicose veins. Um, there's so many other things that you can do than actually then, then get it taken out. So please consult your local osteopath, your local Chinese medicine practitioner, um, your local Czech practitioner, someone that can help you with your hormones, your respiration, your obesity, your weight gain, getting you exercising, um, and manipulation techniques to help get rid of this. Obviously, it's not an aesthetic thing, but get rid of these varicose veins. So hopefully you learned something from our YouTube clip. Stay tuned for some more great YouTube clips, and we'll catch you later.